One of the great things about living in the country is that it's like having a wildlife sanctuary in your living room. But for the folks in this house in northeastern Ohio, living in the country is more like having a wildlife sanctuary in your living room, den, and just about every place else. There's a deer in your kitchen. And she's very deep right. <laughs> this is her kitchen. We just live here. Her name is Dilly, and her two humans are Melanie Butera and Melanie's dear, adoring husband, Steve Heathman. You're attached to your dear. Oh, yeah. Right from the day one, we were very attached. Really? Oh, yeah. The couple first met Dilly at a farm that raises deer for hunting. She was three days old and deathly ill. But Melanie, a veterinarian, nursed her back to health. She then trained her to do her business on a towel and introduced her to the finer things in life. Dilly, will you accept this rose? Which she mostly eats. They've even given Dilly her own bedroom. Adorable or disturbing. Could go either way, but this next part is undeniably endearing. It's licking your dog. Well, this is what they do all day long. Well, they're just like best friends. Like, uh, usually when Dilly's outside, Lady's outside. And they do sleep together in the bed. They're just buddies. Have you ever seen anything so sweet? Of course you have. Cross-species companions have become a YouTube staple and a can't-miss home run for feature reporters like me. For example, my 2009 story on Tara and Bella, the elephant and the dog who are best friends. That has now been viewed on the internet more than four million times. Obviously, people eat this stuff up. We're sort of programmed to appreciate cuteness. And Jennifer Holland aims to capitalize on that programming big time with a new book called Unlikely Friendships. It's a compilation of the sweetest odd couples out there. A woman in Texas who has a whole menagerie of animals and her pit bull and her cat and little chicks that she brings home, they just, there are all these antics going on all the time. But are they really friends? Of course, there's no way to know absolutely, but Barbara J. King, professor of anthropology at the College of William and Mary, seems pretty doggone sure. It's the subtlety of the signals that they're exchanging. Like what kinds of signals? Things like play and grooming. If it goes on over time and the two animals are repeatedly choosing to come back together to do that, yes, I would think that that's a friendship. If so, if the proof is in the preening, then Dilly and Lady the Poodle probably are BFFs. Gotcha. And that's certainly what Steve Heathman would like to believe because it gives him hope for all of us. As humans, we don't get along all the time.